let's set up a nursery for all our phasmid nymphs. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. I hope you're all doing fantastic. So what we're going to be doing today is I have set up a basic enclosure for our phasmid nursery. It is quite a large one, but it is a basic setup and I'll go into the reasons for that in a moment. Now what we're going to be doing is housing some of our freshly hatched nymphs as well as some of our younger generation in here. Now we are going to be doing cross species in here today, guys. In the future when my collection's a bit larger and I can show off a bit more, I will go into which species are a definite no-no to live together. Some that will be all right and some that will do absolutely fine. Now the care requirements for these are not exactly the same, but they're also not vastly different. So they should adapt and be fine within this enclosure at this young age. And when they're older, we will probably separate them depending on how well they're doing. So anyway, you're not here to listen to me blab on, you're here to see the nursery and the phasmids, so we'll crack on with that now. So guys, we're going to start with our Phenopharos Kyoyensis. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, I've always struggled with that one, but it is the giant budwing stick insect. So this was where we were keeping over, and we're just going to have a look in here because we've had some nymphs hatch. So there they all are guys. Some of them are climbing onto me already, oops. Now I'm going to get these housed pretty quick because otherwise they're going to scarper. Now I've popped two in already because they were running all over my hands. What I'm going to do now, take that lid back off. So two are in already, we've got another one, two, three on here. So I'm going to do slightly, gently tap the abdomens of some of them and they'll move on to the leaves. So we had two plus another three just put in. Now let's see how many more there are. There are still two more in here, one up that side. Oh, they are escaping on me already. Sorry guys, the footage of this isn't going to be great, but when dealing with a bunch of young nymphs, we've got some of them running out of the enclosure as we speak. If you imagine, kind of like looking after a bunch of toddlers, where they're all running around all over the place. That's kind of how I'm experiencing right now. Very hard to film. Right, so they're in at the moment. As you can see them walking along the floor. Now this is why I've stuck to the paper towel substrate bottom when I said it's gonna be basic. Let's see, they're already making an escape for it. And that is because, one, you can see them when they're on the floor and two because if you do have any dye you're not going to be able to lose count because you'll be able to actually see them the dead ones on the floor as grim as that sounds when you've got so many nymphs it's good to try and keep a count so there's all these ones now let's move on to housing some of our others into the nursery now this was a temporary little nursery of some other nymphs so i'm going to be taking the top off here see if any are on the top. So here is a baby Ectatosoma tiaratum. Now unfortunately a lot of our nymphs didn't make it. We only had a few actually hatch. Um, this was the only survivor. So that's what they'll look like. So this one has molted I think it was twice possibly three times so far. Still absolutely tiny. So I'm gonna pop him in now. Right, with him in, let's lift this and see if there's any on the tops. Yeah, I thought there might be. So if you see here, guys, you see these little beauties? These are just Indian stick insect babies. Now, if you saw my video regarding Indian stick insects not being so boring, and we saw Hermit, my only Indian left in the collection, well, this is Hermit's babies, guys. So we're gonna see how many have survived. So we've currently got two on here. I'm gonna pop these in and we'll count the rest. Just take this one out and we'll see what we've got. You see that one moving down there? That's our Acanthoxilla geocevi or geosovi. Now this one unfortunately did lose a leg in its last molt. If you want to know more about this species, these are 
sorry, two seconds. These are a New Zealand based species that have cultured here in the UK. If you've seen my video on wild caught stick insect, that was the mother of this one. You see it's got the front leg missing, the rest of it is absolutely fine. So yes, I know that this is the baby of that one because um, the because this one was actually found in the exact same location as the mother was um, about five months later. So one of her eggs had hatched and it was a dainty little girl when I first picked her up and uh, she's molted a few times into my care. So I'm going to pop her in now and then we'll try and find the rest of those Indians. Now, one of the reasons I said you should always count them is because baby Indians especially are very easy to lose. And um, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I lost my bit of paper seeing how many were in this nursery. It is possible that only those two survived, but I'm sure there was at least another two. Well, I found one more. Just going to pop that one in now. Well guys, I couldn't spot another one. Um, I did have a soil based substrate in that one because it actually did originally only house that girl there um, before it turned into a nursery. So I wouldn't be able to see very well if a nymph had died in there, but it is a possibility. So what I've done is I've put the remainder of that food plant in there as well. Now you'll notice the food plants aren't reaching right to the top. They do not need to, this is a nursery. All the phasmids are of a small size. Now I want this one basic. I don't want lots of twigs and things where it's gonna be hard to find all the babies when I count them during cleaning days. And I, like I said, I wanted the paper towel bottom so that I can tell if any nymphs have passed away and that I do not knock them out there when I'm sorting through any substrate. So there we have it, all these sides here, apart from the left and right side, the back, and the top is meshed so that they've got places to hang for molting. So let's just have another little view at some of our guys. So there we have those two hanging around together. Our lady there, our biggest one, and our Extatosoma tiaratum. We have a budwing over there. And there's an Indian actually just playing dead on the floor here. It, it is alive. Sorry, the quality isn't great. But yeah, so if I zoom back out, you can really see now that it is a very large enclosure for a nursery. It's giving plenty of space. That's one thing you need to bear in mind, especially if you cross species, is to keep plenty of space in the enclosure. They can hang and molt off the branches or they can climb to the very, very top. And this will give them enough space then until pretty much when most of them are adults. So that's going to be it from me today ladies and gentlemen um i'm sorry it may have come across a little bit rushed but like i told you it's like watching a bunch of toddlers so it was more important to me to keep the best eye that i could on them rather than managing to capture each little process between each one as they went in because if they escape guys they haven't got access to the food plants and the likelihood they is they will actually die and as I'm talking to you now, I can spot one. Bear with me. We uh, had another little Indian escape. Luckily, I can see that from here. I am gonna close the door now, guys. Sorry about that. But you see what I mean? Any moment they can run out. But I hope you like the video all the same. So if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe and the little bell icon next to it will inform you of my future updates. Like the video if you liked it and leave us a comment. Until next time guys, take care. Thank you, bye bye.